I was on a call the other day and I got a really great question. They asked, Seth, when does it make sense to syndicate a deal? Is there a certain amount of money I have to raise before I can syndicate it? Do I have to have a certain number of investors? How does that work? And I thought this would be a great video topic. So here we are, and this is exactly what I'm talking about today. So make sure you hit the subscribe button right now so you don't miss more videos about building wealth through multifamily real estate. I'm Seth Ferguson, and here we go. Let's get right into it. When to syndicate your deal. There are three different factors I want you to consider when deciding whether or not you should actually syndicate a deal. And uh, just to keep things simple, we're going to follow those three right now. And the first one is actually going to be how much money do you have to raise? Syndication is a, a Wall Street construct, right? And Wall Street does one thing very, very well, and that is raise a whole bunch of money and deploy it very efficiently. So if you're looking to raise a large amount of money, and you need a great structure to put that into so you can efficiently deploy it into a deal, well, syndication makes a whole lot of sense. So if you're raising 10, 20, 30 million dollars, five million dollars, it makes sense to syndicate the deal because syndication is built to do that. Now, if you're only raising 200, half a million dollars, it doesn't make sense to syndicate the deal because the cost is going to be prohibitive. And that's going to be the second thing I want to talk about is cost right? Syndication can be costly, right? There's all the documents uh, you need to do. There's the, the tax planning, all the legal mumbo jumbo that uh, the lawyers need to do for you. Uh, it does cost money. So if you're doing a small deal, let's say you're buying a duplexed house, doesn't make sense to syndicate the deal. Well, at that point, the money you're raising, it's probably not very much, right? It's not going to be millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars, except if you live in Vancouver, Toronto, California, New York, uh, but uh, with, with some exceptions. You're not raising a whole lot of money, so you don't need to deploy a large amount of capital efficiently. And then there's the cost. Let, let's say it's uh, an $800,000 property. You know, the cost is going to be prohibitive to actually syndicate the deal because it doesn't make sense. And if you're only raising, you know, uh, you know, half a million bucks, something like that, you may only have one or two other people with you in the deal bringing that capital. So at that point, it doesn't make sense. You're probably better off uh, creating some sort of uh, joint venture type of agreement. Uh, it's going to keep everybody active in the deal, which is probably what you want at that small size. And it's going to be more cost effective for you to actually structure the deal and make it happen. Now, the third thing I want you to consider is actually the end goal of the project. So what's the end goal with it? If you are looking to do a project and you're looking to bring on you know, one or two other investors and you're going to keep things kind of small, you want them to be active in the deal, they're, they're okay with assuming the unlimited risk that goes along with active joint ventures, you know, do the joint venture. And there are people that will joint venture on a large apartment complex. I know them. Like there are, there's a group of uh, four guys and they go around and they buy the apartment deal uh, together and that's what they do and they all actively manage it and i'll put a link right up here to a video i did explaining all about partnerships and some things to watch out for uh because of that whole active versus passive and risk and unlimited risk and all of that sort of stuff so definitely check out that video but what's the end goal of the project if the goal of the project is to pool the resources of a number of investors and it doesn't have to be a lot. Like you can syndicate a deal with three investors. You can syndicate a deal with one other person. It, it doesn't really matter. But if you're looking to raise a large amount of capital from a good number of investors and the goal of these investors is to be passive, if that is the goal of these investors, then you should syndicate because the joint venture isn't going to give that true passive investing uh, type of opportunity. And it's not going to afford these investors the protections that the limited partnership, the syndication structure gives you. And I'll put a link right up here to another video I did explaining more in depth about the syndication structure and how you actually put these things together. That's not today's topic. So if the goal of the investors is to be passive, and enjoy the protections the passive nature affords them. And if the goal of the project is to raise a large amount of money from either some or a large amount of uh, investors and efficiently deploy that capital under the management of what's called the general partnership, the person with the real estate experience, the track record, the team, they found the deal, they can manage it, all of that sort of stuff. If this is the goal, if this is the type of setup, that you are looking for, if this is the end result you want, then syndication is for you because then you can go out, acquire the asset, the general partnership will manage it, 
uh, manage the deal. The limited partnership will ride along, get all the benefits, the flow through for tax benefits, all of that sort of stuff that comes along with it. If this is not the goal, then don't syndicate it. You know, if your goal is to raise a small amount of money, that's great, joint venture is perfect. If your goal is to raise money from one or two ind individuals and they want to assume that unlimited risk, then don't syndicate it. If the cost is prohibitive because of the size, don't syndicate it. But if you're working in larger apartment buildings and you need to raise that capital, deploy it efficiently, and really look after your passive investors, then syndication is a great choice for you. And if you're interested in learning more about apartment investing, how you can invest either actively or passively, how you can use syndication or other structures to make that happen, I have a program called Discover Multifamily. And the whole goal of the program is to take you from ground zero, so total beginner, all the way through to getting your very first deal done. That is the focus. It is very much an action-based program. You will be putting in time and effort. You will be busy. And if this sounds like something you are interested in getting you from ground zero to your very first deal, go to callseth.com, set up a call, uh, fill out the form completely because that actually helps us have a better call. And we will see if the program makes sense for you. And we have new student cohorts launching periodically throughout the year. So we can get you in to the cohort where it makes sense. So go to callseth.com. And if you like this video, if you found this useful, hit the like button, leave a comment, let me know what you think. It really helps out the channel. And until next time, happy investing.